So we've just been talking about translating functions up or down on the xy plane. We're now going to discuss translating functions to the left or right on the xy plane, or Cartesian plane. And this is a little bit different. On the left hand side here, we have the function that we've been working with, which is y is equal to x squared. And then we have our rules for translating functions on the right. So before when we looked at shifting functions up or down, we said that if you take the function f of x, you can either add or subtract a constant to that function to move it up or down respectively. Left and right shifts are a little bit different, however. To shift a function or graph to the right, you evaluate f of x minus c. So compared to up-down shifts, where you're adding a constant to the function, here you're actually evaluating f of x minus c or f of x plus c. So if we take the function we've been working with, y is equal to x squared, and we add 1 to that, we know that that will shift it upwards. But if we want to shift it to the left by 1, we would actually evaluate for x plus 1 in parentheses and the entire thing squared. Also note, for rightward shifts, you're evaluating f of x minus c. And for leftward shifts, you're evaluating f of x plus c, which may seem a little counterintuitive, especially when you compare it to upward and downward shifts. So let's take a look at a few examples here. Again, we start with the function that we've been using, y is equal to x squared. If we wanted to shift this graph one unit to the right on the x-axis, we would evaluate f of x minus 1. So when we do that, for every x term we have in the original function, we replace that with x minus 1. Doing that here gives us x minus 1 in parentheses, and we square the entire thing. And we can shift the original function, however many units we wish, by adding or subtracting additional quantities. So for example here, we have y is equal to x squared. If we wanted to shift this two units to the right, we would evaluate f of x minus 2. When we do that, we fill in x minus 2 everywhere we have an x, and that gives us x minus 2 in parentheses, and we square that entire expression. This lecture is a little bit shorter, but I want to keep these divided up by topic so you can quickly reference them later. We've just been discussing translation of functions. When we come back, we'll talk about reflecting functions.